I'm going to discuss chapter 26. It's about oligopoly, and I like one thing I like about this is that the chapter is called oligopoly and strategic behavior. Uh, it's that part where I'm going to focus. Um, in all textbooks this, that I've seen, this tends to be where the focus is. Um, this is the harder part is the strategic behavior, so it's the part that you know bears more explanation on my part. And as it turns out, I've actually had a little fun preparing this because I'm going to try to cater it to uh, coronavirus. So I'm, going to, I'm thinking right now that I'm going to be breaking this down into three videos, three parts. Um, I think that'll work nicely. So this first piece will just be introductory. Then I'll just do the prisoner's dilemma, and then I'll wrap it up in a third piece. So anyway, oligopoly, I need to define that, right? Um, of course, that's in the book, but uh, oligopoly, I, I just am just listing the characteristics here because that's the difference between each of the types of firms that we've looked at has been in these characteristics. So in oligopoly, the characteristics are that generally, this need not always be true, but generally we're talking about an indistinguishable product or largely indistinguishable product. Uh, or if it's a distinguishable product, they are close substitutes, okay? But there are a small number of firms. That's, a key, that's the key thing. Small number of firms, and there's limited entry and exit. So a couple of examples, historic examples, are, of course, uh, OPEC, uh, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. That is, they, they uh, drill oil. Um, and these countries, there are just few oil by the barrel. There are only two kinds of oil in the world, West Texas Intermediate and... Um, The one that's over in Europe more frequently, I think it's uh, Black Sea or something like that is the name of it. Uh, oil is oil for the most part. Um, so it's an indistinguishable product. These different countries can drill for oil. And there aren't that many. And if you don't have oil under your ground, then you can't really get into that market, can you? So uh, the structure then that exists, the incentive structure, is for these countries to collude and to each limit their production of oil to be able to get a higher price. In other words, unify into a monopoly because there are a small number of firms, in this case countries, um, and you know with very limited communication they could do that and they have done that. Um, so OPEC is a cartel uh, which is akin to an oligopoly and that's a commonly cited example. Uh, another one that I remember hearing about in the, about the 90s was the cereal companies. You have Post, Kellogg's, and um, General Mills. And I think that's about it. Uh, they're just kind of, I think it's a big three cereal companies. And they were accused of implicit collusion in the 90s, where if um, Kellogg's, let's say, I don't know the history of this specifically, but say Kellogg's raised their prices, Post and General Mills could see that and immediately they could also raise their prices. So effectively, the accusation, I don't remember what the courts decided, but the accusation was that they were implicitly colluding because there were a few, so few firms that produced cereal and you can hop over from one cere breakfast cereal to another breakfast cereal. Um, so those are a couple of examples of the kind of thing we're talking about. Um, but now I'm going to, th that's just, that's like taking oligopoly and using it to be related to the types of firms we've talked about, perfect competition, monopoly, and monopolistic competition. Now that we have kind of related to those, we're going to step away from it and talk about the incentive structure within that limited number of firms. Because um, they do have an incentive to collude, but there's a problem with that. Uh, when left alone, it's very it, it it could be difficult for them to collude. This leads us to the only model in this chapter. Uh, the model is generally referred to as the prisoner's dilemma. So, in the next video segment, I'll call this an introduction. Then I'll go through the prisoner's dilemma since that's our core element here, our model. See you then.